Right now I'm in Tucson, Arizona and I am so excited because today I am finally getting to do filming locations for a movie that I've been wanting to do locations for for so long. This is one of my favorite movies of all time. Another one of my top five favorite movies. So today we're checking out filming locations for the 1987 classic Can't Buy Me Love. Let's go see what we can find. So the movie begins at one of my favorite filming locations that I've ever been to. This is of course the house of Cindy Mancini. Not an actual house in real life, but the clubhouse for this neighborhood. And we see Ronald Miller riding on his lawnmower with some mountains in the background behind him. He would have been riding right over here on the side of the house. Those mountains back there are the ones that you can see behind him. He then comes around to the front of the house. And as you can see, not too much has changed here since they filmed the movie. And right over here, there was a random neighborhood kid sitting on the fence watching Ronald mow the lawn. He then jumps off the fence and follows him across the front yard. The camera then shoots in the opposite direction and you can see the two houses across the street. Now, although the area directly in front of me has changed a bit, those two houses across the street are still there. You can see both of those garage doors in the shot. Next comes our introduction to Cindy Mancini. We see her and her friends pull into the driveway and then onto this path, which I don't think is actually a driveway, but just a walking path. They then walk right past Ronald Miller, who's kneeling down in the grass, cleaning out the lawnmower. He would have been kneeling down right here as they walk right past him on that path. And Cindy's mom is standing by the front door waiting to get her credit cards back from Cindy. And not only does this appear to be the same trim going around the door, but it also appears to be the exact same front door. And this is where her mom tells her, why can't you be more like the Miller boy? And she looks over and sees the grass blow in his face. He would have been kneeling down right over on the other side of this wall. You can actually see a bit of the wall in that shot. And that brings us to one of the coolest locations I've ever been able to film at, Ronald Miller's house. And we'll be going back to this location a few times throughout the video. Please keep in mind that this is a private residence and I had permission from the owners to be here. If you decide to visit this location, as always, you should be respectful and never come onto people's private property. I should also mention that there's not a lot of this house that you can see from the streets. Ronald arrives at his house after riding his lawnmower all the way from Cindy's house, about a two and a half mile ride through some pretty crazy hills. I don't think it would have happened in real life, but anyways, he comes through the front gate right here and rides his mower on this path past the front of the house before then parking his lawnmower in the shed. He would have rode right past the front here and then right over here at the end, this is where the shed was. He then comes out of the shed and yells to his little brother, Chucky, mom told you not to play in the tree house anymore, which makes me wonder why do they have a tree house in the first place? But right over here is where that tree house would have been. The next day we see Ronald riding his bike over a giant hill of dirt and right past the front of Tucson High School. And that's because at the time they were building their brand new football field. So everything in the front was under construction. Now right here in front of me would have been that big mountain of dirt that he rides his bike over. And then he goes right past the front of the school. The camera then shoots the other way and we see these buildings off in the distance, which are now blocked by all of this. If you come to the intersection of Euclid and 6th Street, you'll find the front of Tucson High School. And on the other side of this sign, you'll find this newer building that was not here in the 80s. That's because this used to be the football field. And this is where Cindy Mancini and the other cheerleaders were having cheerleading practice. And on the other side of that field, Ronald was sitting on his bike watching Cindy. <laughs> Now, like I mentioned, at the time they were building a brand new football stadium, and once that was completed, they built this building on the site of the old football field. Now, although the original field is long gone, there's some houses and a building that you can see across the street throughout that scene. And basically where I'm currently standing, I would have been standing on the old football field, and you can see across the street, there's those houses, and there's that building on the corner. There's also a newer building in front of it now. This building would not have been here at the time. 
Now everything's pretty well blocked now, but if I walk out a little bit further onto the sidewalk, you can get a better view of everything across the street. And you can see that these three houses and that building on the corner still match up perfectly. Now here's a little piece of interesting information for you. If you pay really close attention to that scene, just outside of the football field, you can see some protesters walking up and down the sidewalk holding picket signs. And according to this article that I found, those were actually Teamsters that were working on the movie and they were protesting because they felt that the students from the high school that were being used as extras weren't being paid enough. So they came out here and they were walking up and down this sidewalk holding picket signs and they actually got into this scene. Pretty crazy, huh? I actually never noticed this until now. We see Ronald and Kenneth walk through a set of three doors and a staircase can be seen behind them as they walk down a hallway with lockers. Here's that set of three doors that they walk through and here's that staircase that you can see behind them. The only problem is that hallway with the lockers is now the attendance office, which used to be located on the first floor by the front entrance, but it was moved when the school underwent major renovations sometime in the 90s. But if we go back to those three doors and we take a look at what's on the other side of those doors, the brick walls and this hallway on the right still match up perfectly. And if we go back to the staircase, these double doors and these windows can be seen behind them in that shot. Ronald and Kenneth are riding their bikes home from school when a Ferrari passes by and they start talking about if that would help make them popular. And that was filmed right around the corner from Cindy's house. That's Cindy's house right there. And this is the street that they're riding down. This is actually a cul-de-sac. So they would have been coming out of the dead end, riding their bikes towards me as the Ferrari passes by and stops right here at the corner. And you can actually see this house on the corner behind Kenneth during the close-ups. We now head back to the Miller residence where Ronald's dad is washing his tic tac tile mobile in the driveway. You can see the entrance to the front yard right behind the car and everything here still looks exactly the same. Of course, Ronald would have been sitting on his bike watching his dad wash the car and he was sitting right over here in front of the garage. Now I'm pretty sure that they not only used this location for the exteriors of Cindy's house, but also for the interiors of Cindy's house, at least for some of the scenes. This is the kitchen that she would have just walked out of when she was going to answer the front door. And we don't actually see this in the movie, but unfortunately this is all you can see from looking through the window. This is the kitchen window. And of course this is the front door where Rock would have been standing. So the placement of everything does match up with what we see in the movie. Now I did try reaching out to the HOA for this neighborhood to try and gain access to this building. I know that this clubhouse has three bedrooms and I would have loved to see Cindy's room and her mom's room and of course the infamous closet where she gets the suede outfit. But unfortunately, they're extremely private and everything is off limits and only accessible to homeowners. And of course, the Tucson Mall plays a huge part in this movie. The camera pans down from this skylight and we see Ronald standing inside this store, getting ready to purchase a brand new telescope for $1,000. He would have been standing right here inside this store. Now, the last time I was here, this was a pet shop and it's now a game store, but this is where he was standing. Remember there was a kid standing right here and his mom comes up and smacks the bag of chips out of his hands. As Ronald's trying out the telescope, that's when he spots Cindy walking through the mall. And of course, Cindy walks over to the clothing shop, which in the movie would have been located right over here, directly across from where Ronald's buying the telescope. But it's really hard to say if this is the actual store that they used for filming. The next morning, we see Ronald nervously pacing back and forth right here, waiting for Cindy to show up. And that was filmed at the front entrance to Tucson High School. I am so glad to see that it looks exactly the same. Cindy finally shows up and she walks through this middle set of doors and once she sees Ronald, she turns around and runs back outside. Ronald and Cindy walk through that center door and then down these stairs, around this brick wall and they walk straight back to where the column is. Now at the time, there was no wheelchair ramp here so they were able to walk straight back to where the wall is. Now if we come onto the wheelchair ramp, we can see this is exactly where they were standing. Now the camera would have been a bit lower because it was on their level, 
but right here in front of this column, this is where they discuss the terms and conditions of their deal and where she puts the gel in his hair and eventually rips the sleeves off of his shirt. And in front of this column is where she finally learns his name. My name is Ronald, not Donald. The hallway that they use to enter the school is actually the entrance to the school auditorium, which is located directly across from the main entrance to the school. When they come out of the entrance to the auditorium, they make a left into the main hallway and they walk past a bunch of trophy cases and they walk right past Big John, Quint, and Ricky who would have been standing right here. Now here's all the trophy cases that they walk by. They've just gotten a bit shorter because they've added a lot more photos to the wall. And notice those lights up there. They're the exact same ones that you see in the movie. Barbara and Patty are hanging out by the vending machines the first time they see Cindy walking with Ronald. And those vending machines were actually located in front of the other entrance to the auditorium, which is right down here. But this entire area has been heavily remodeled. They added walls in between these stairs and the entrance to the auditorium, which is right here. So right up against this wall is where those vending machines were. And when they walk away, the camera's pointing in the opposite direction, and you can see the stairs behind them. That's basically this shot right here. This is actually the pillar that Patty and Barbara are standing in front of. But since they added all these walls and new doors, it's almost impossible to recognize. Another important location to this movie is the lunch area here at Tucson High School. And I'm happy to say that not a lot has changed here, except for them adding a few more awnings and the lunch tables are no longer here. It was right here in front of me where Quint gets his free lunch, and then he goes walking and looking for an empty table. Oh, hey, here's one. And you can see right here where Quint would have been walking, there's a lot more posts now. That's because this awning that I'm currently standing under, this wasn't here, so none of these pillars were here either. Ronald and Cindy get their lunch, and they find a table that's right across from Quint, and he doesn't like that. He comes over to tell Ronald to go sit in the losers section and of course Cindy defends Ronald and when she's telling off Quint you can see the tennis courts behind her which are right over there but now this newer building blocks the tennis courts. And that's about the time that Big John stops in his tracks because that Wimpus Miller is sitting at their table and it was right here in front of me where Big John, Ricky, Barbara and Patty are getting their lunch. Of course, they decide to go sit down at the table and have a conversation with Ronald, and it turns out that he's a pretty cool guy. Meanwhile, Ronald's old friends are watching what's going on, and Kenneth doesn't like it one bit. Now, their table would have been right over here. You can see this building behind him, including that little hump in the building. It was on this property right here in front of me that at one time stood Scoop's Tuxedo of Tucson, and of course, that's where Cindy brings Ronald after his first big day, and there's a building just to the right of Scoops, and you'll see that's still here. However, this Mexican food restaurant is not the same building that was used for Scoops. That building was torn down a long time ago, and then this building was built a little bit more over to the left. Uh, although this Mexican food restaurant and Scoops share the same address, this building is a little bit more over to the left. You'll notice in the movie, there's only about enough space between the two buildings to park one row of cars, and there's now a lot more space. So I would love to go inside of Los Betos and tell you that it was right here where Ronald and Cindy are sharing a pizza, but that would be a lie. I'm sorry, it's just not true. Now, if you pay really close attention during that scene, Right behind Ronald and Cindy, you can see this shopping center and this building. It's a little hard to see because there's a bunch of umbrellas, but it's definitely there. And based on that, I would guess that right about here was the entrance to Scoops and then the table that they're sitting at. And right over here would have been where Cindy's car was parked, which you can see just outside the door. The people that own Ronald's house confirmed for me that they did in fact film inside of that house for the interiors of Ronald's place and they said that some things have changed and some things are still the same. They also confirmed that that room with the stone wall is still the same and the stone wall is still there. After being ignored by Ronald all weekend, Kenneth has had enough and he's waiting for him by the front entrance to the school. They begin walking down the hallway together and talking about what a total jerk Ronald's become. Ronald walks through those doors and Kenneth is waiting right here by this pillar they then walk down the main hallway of the school past all of those same trophy cases that we saw earlier in the video. They then walk past where all of the vending machines are, another place that I already showed you. 
which is right here, but again, the walls and doors make it unrecognizable. They continue walking down the hall and Kenneth has finally had enough. He pushes Ronald's arm off right about here and then begins to walk up these stairs. At which point, Ronald stops Kenneth and apologizes, but then continues to be a total jerk. And it's so cool to see this area look the same. It looks like they might have redone the floors, but other than that. After Ronald pretty much blows off Kenneth again, he watches him walk down these steps and out these doors where his new friends are waiting. After school, Ronald decides to go over to Cindy's house and give her a car wash. The car would have been parked right here on this path, and Cindy would have been sitting in the grass right over here watching Ronald do all the work. After a little bit, Cindy gets exhausted from watching Ronald do all that work, and she goes inside to get herself something to drink. Ronald takes his shirt off because he actually is tired and exhausted, and instead of bringing Ronald something cold to drink, Cindy brings him some poetry Some day my wish is for him to hold me in his arms in a sea of deep blue, together at last, together as two. Oh, that's beautiful. One day my wish is to be able to have a playful water fight like this with my wife while we're washing the car, because whenever I spray her with the hose, she looks at me like she's gonna rip my eyeballs out of my head. It's time for Ronald and Cindy's final date, and he's got a big night planned for him. Ronald's mom would have been standing right over there by the front entrance to the house, watching them walk out the gate right here, and again, I gotta point out, everything looks exactly the same and I love it. They walk out the front gate and then right over here is where Cindy's car would have been parked, right in front of the garage, which at the time was just a carport. This whole area looks the same too, they've just added garage doors to the carport. They hop in Cindy's car and they speed off down the driveway. Ronald and Cindy arrive to their final date and Cindy's a little confused because it's just a brick wall and here's that brick wall. So awesome. I don't know how just a brick wall can be so recognizable to me, but this is definitely it. And supposedly on the other side of this wall was the airplane junkyard. Graveyard. Sorry, airplane graveyard, my bad. And then right over here is where that white box was, which I believe was placed there just for the movie. So they would have something to climb on top of. And Cindy climbs up there, they peek over the wall. And like I said, it's supposed to be the airplane graveyard but I'll show you what's really on the other side of this wall. It's just some type of a storage yard. That's what they really would have been looking at. Now, something that I find really interesting about this location that I never realized from watching the movie is right across from it is a little residential area. And like I said, you just, you don't really get that from watching the movie. Kind of weird. So like I said, Ronald and Cindy peer over the wall and they see the airplane graveyard, a place that Ronald likes to hang out at. In real life, it's the old airplane boneyard part of the Air Force Base here in Tucson. I've seen some people argue that this scene was actually filmed at the Air and Space Museum, but as you can see, even the mountains match up here. This is definitely the right place. As Ronald and Cindy's final date comes to an end, they're sitting in Cindy's car outside of Ronald's house staring at the moon, and by this point, Cindy's completely in love with Ronald, but he's too caught up in being popular to notice or even care. Ronald asks how they're going to do their breakup the next day. That upsets Cindy and she leaves. Again, Ronald doesn't even notice. The next day, Cindy's walking through school completely unaware of what she's about to see. Notice these steps down here. Cindy was walking away from the lunch area right by these steps. They've since added these things that look like warp zones for Super Mario Brothers. And as she's walking by this area, that's when she witnesses this. Yep, it was on that planner where she sees Ronald doing whatever it is he was doing. I guess he was trying to pop and lock, I don't know. But it was also in front of these planters where they have their fake breakup. And of course, Ronald takes it too far because that's what he does. And Cindy ends up getting upset. And after school, he follows Cindy home and we see them pass right by her neighbor's house here. She then parks her car pretty much in the same spot where Ronald's giving it a car wash earlier in the movie. By this point, Cindy's pretty much had enough of Ronald and they're walking on the path up to her front door. We see them walk right past this brick wall. And I'm sure you can hear the fountain in the background. And I think this is the only time where you get a quick glimpse of that fountain. 
Now there's the fountain and also notice this tree right here. And here's the fountain and there's that tree. It's just gotten a lot bigger. Ronald gives Cindy a folder for her poetry, which I guess is supposed to make up for him acting like a total jerk. And she tells Ronald to never change. Me change? Never. And once again, you can see that same tree behind him. Again, it's just gotten a lot bigger. The next day, Ronald shows up to school looking like Pat Riley. He walks through the auditorium doors and into that main hallway and right past all of those trophy cases that we already saw earlier in this video. Now that Ronald's Mr. Popular, he takes Barbara on a date to Scoops. Meanwhile, his old friends are next door at the arcade. His friends are inside the arcade playing 720 and a bunch of other cool games when they look out the window and they see Ronald pulling up in his dad's station wagon. Now this is pretty close to the shot we get of him pulling up in the station wagon without me going inside the building. Ronald pulls up and his new friends admire his dad's station wagon and that was roughly right about here. Now that's about the time that he points Big John's butt into the car so that he can fart and punish Chucky who's hiding inside the station wagon. I can't believe that it was right here where Big John cut that fart. Amazing. Notice when Ronald turns to walk into Scoops, he turns and takes one step and he's already on the sidewalk. Now I'm standing pretty much in the same area where he was, and if I turn around, it's way more than one step to get to the sidewalk. Just more proof that this building's been moved. So there was a lot of confusion concerning the gym where they have the school dance. Originally, I was told that that gym had been torn down and a new gym had been built, which is partially true. They did build a new gym, but they also kept that original gym. However, in 2009, the original gym was heavily remodeled and it's completely unrecognizable. But considering that when I was there, I was told that the gym from the movie no longer exists, I just didn't bother going to check out the gym, so that's a total bummer. However, I was able to have somebody send me a couple of pictures of what the gym looks like today. This is the outside of the original gym. Inside this building is where Ronald introduced the world to the African anteater ritual. And this is what the inside of the gym now looks like. As you can see, it looks nothing like it did in the movie, but this is where that scene took place. After the dance, they head over to Scoops for some late night ice cream. This time they're hanging out on the opposite side of Scoops. It would have been pretty much in this area right here. Ronald sees Cindy getting some ice cream and he heads over to say hello and they go walking around the front of the building and she walks over to the other side by the arcade where her new boyfriend Brent is hanging out by his Porsche. They basically would have been walking right along here and then right over there is where Cindy's new boyfriend is hanging out by his Porsche. It's Halloween time and they're getting ready to celebrate at the Miller household. And as they're hanging up the decorations, Ronald comes running out of the house about to go out and cause some trouble. Ronald's dad stops him and tries to warn him not to cause any mischief, but do you think he'll listen? Of course not. As they travel down Speedway Boulevard, Ronald's new friends show him the doo-doo bomb that they plan on using that night. Unfortunately, Ronald has no idea whose house he'll be using it on. So it was roughly somewhere right about here where the van pulls up and then Ronald realizes that they're at his best friend's house. This was Kenneth's house and they finally convince Ronald that he's going to do it. They get out of the van and they cross the street. And it was this tree right here that Ronald hides behind. He runs right here and hides behind this tree and they're throwing the eggs at the house and then he finally gets up enough guts and he runs right up onto the lawn and he tosses the doo-doo bomb at the front door. Uh, the house still looks really similar to how it did in the movie. You can see it's got a different front door, but other than that, it looks like Kenneth's house. And then Kenneth is hiding somewhere over here in the bushes when he drops the net on Ronald and he runs over and it was right here next to this tree where Kenneth and Ronald are rustling in the net. And then of course he lets him go and Ronald runs back to the van. I think he'll be back. It's now the holidays and Ronald's getting ready to celebrate by telling Big John and Ricky about the New Year's party he's gonna be having at his house. That's about the same time that he notices Iris checking him out. It's also during this scene that Cindy walks up and tries to get friendly with Ronald again. Now there's a few halls here at Tucson High School that look just like this, and where all of these glass bricks are, 
these used to be lockers. So it's quite possible that this is where that scene was filmed. But like I said, there's a few halls here that look just like this. Now, one location that I would have loved to find, but I just wasn't able to do it, is Big John's house where they have the New Year's Eve party. And the reason why I wasn't able to find it is this is pretty much all you see of the outside of the house. So there's not a lot of clues. But of course, I would have loved to find this location because it's really important to the movie. Ronald's old friends are driving down Speedway Boulevard when they spot some poor old guy walking home all alone in the cold on New Year's Eve. Little do they know that it's actually Ronald. Ah, I remember this cold summer Tucson night like it was yesterday. They're actually driving directly across the street from where Ronald's walking, and they're passing by Walser Mazda, which used to be located right here, and we actually found some old ads for Walser Mazda in an old Tucson newspaper. The main building that you see Ronald walking past is 3013 Speedway Boulevard, which is now this tanning place. At the time, it was Christie's Appliance, and we actually found some old newspaper ads for Christie's Appliance when it was located at that address. Ronald walks all the way home, but when he gets there, he realizes he can't or doesn't want to go inside because there's a New Year's Eve party going on. So he stands right here looking through these windows, watching everybody do the African anteater ritual. Now Ronald's not liked by his old friends or his new friends, and life at school is pretty tough for him. He was sitting right here when he realizes that he should have took economics class. Patty, Barbara, and Cindy are hanging out at Scoops having some ice cream when they see Ronald drive by in his dad's station wagon, ducking down trying to spy on him. We see him drive past all of these buildings. He then passes by Casa Video, a video rental store that's still in business all these years later. Amazing. Right next door to Scoops at the arcade, Ronald decides to finally confront Kenneth and apologize for, you know, pooping on his house. So as far as I can tell, it would have been right here in front of me where that confrontation takes place, but the camera would have been pointing this way. So that game that Kenneth is playing would have been right up against the glass right where I'm standing. So it was right here in this area where Kenneth tells him, you pooped on my house. Now I don't have 100% confirmation on this one, but somebody told me that where this Cinnabon now is, this used to be the makeup store where Cindy's sitting and trying on makeup when Chucky comes up and starts bugging her about Ronald. Now I will say that when you stand right in front of the Cinnabon, the view right across from it seems to match up with what we see in the movie. This very well may be the right place. Ronald's finally lost his mind and he heads over to Cindy's house at 6 a.m. to start mowing the lawn. She comes running outside and yells at him to stop before her mom calls the police. That was right here in front of her house. She was standing where that dirt path now is. So I guess I was wrong about the fountain because as she's walking away telling him that she'll be out of the country, you can see the fountain and her car in the background. Later at school, Kenneth is trying to pull a Ronald McDonald Miller scam with Patty. Ronald's sitting right here by this tree having lunch, watching and thinking how Kenneth is ripping him off. Quint sees what's going on and he's had enough. He's going over there to put a stop to it. Again, the view's a bit different because of this awning. None of these pillars would have been here at the time. Ronald grabs a baseball bat and runs over to be a hero. One of the teachers that's watching realizes she has to stop the kids from killing each other, but the other teacher's like, hold on, I wanna see how this plays out. Ronald gives one of his famous speeches. Quint realizes he was wrong. Him and Kenneth shake hands and everybody's happy. Ronald goes back to being the lawn boy and Cindy's coming out to pay him back the money, but I'm not really sure why she held up her end of the deal. But Ronald would have been mowing the lawn right here. All of this was grass at the time and they meet at this path. As they're talking, Cindy's friends pull up and she's gotta go. But as they're pulling away, she realizes there's not enough guys in the car for her and she runs down the street after Ronald. She jumps on the back of his mower, takes his silly hat, and they begin renegotiating their deal. And they would have been riding along right here, and then they ride off into the sunset happily ever after. Well, that's gonna do it for this video. Oh, oh, well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.